This video is a follow-up to this other video where I talked about how to organize your knowledge with the Zettelkasten method. So if you haven't done so already, I recommend you go watch that video first so that this follow-up will make more sense. Now, that video has received a lot of positive feedback. It is for this reason that I would be remiss if I didn't mention three things that in that video were either missing or deserved some rectifying. Huge thanks to the Reddit user named Gavatter for pointing them out to me. Number one, tags are doors, not corridors. In the video, I show tags as a tool to be used to link notes together, but Lumen didn't do that. Tags do not in fact link notes together, and that's not their purpose. We have links for that. What tags do is to provide entry points to your slipbox. Lumen only used the same keyword for a very, very small number of slips, and of all notes in all of his boxes, very few are even tagged at all. So if you think of your slip box as a building, then tags would be like doors opening up to certain rooms of your notes. If you want to follow what Lumen did, then be parsimonious in your use of tags. Don't think of them as something that needs to be added to every single note. Think of them instead as entryways, access points to your slip box. Number two, the tag index. This is something I didn't talk about previously, but which I think is worth mentioning. Lumen had an index of all of his tags. Whenever he added a new tag into the system, he would also add it to his index. This actually links back to point number one. This index can essentially be considered to be the slipbox's homepage, so to speak, where you start your queries. If Lumen had a question in mind and was looking for the slipbox to answer it, then he would look at the index first and then dive in, later following the note's internal links. In some software, this list of tags might already be done for you, but I want to be as system agnostic as I can. Just putting it out there, it's something you can do. Number three, list sequences or Folgezette. What it is, is actually very simple. It's a child note that branches off from an existing parent note. There's actually a very good article on zettelkasten.de about this topic, uh, which explains it in a lot more detail. So I'll link to that in the description. And this is in fact an illustration taken from it. So you're writing a note. Note one, an idea comes to you which is related to note one. So you write note two. Then another idea comes to mind, which is related to note one, but not to note two. So you branch off. You keep going and essentially create lists this way. Lumen did this all the time. And in fact, his ID system heavily reflected that. In the case I have just described you, Lumen would use the ID system you see in the third column. If a note had an ID of one, let's say, the new branch would have the ID of one A. If another branch branched off of that, then we would have say one A one and so on. Nowadays, I and so many other people use the date and the time as the ID. And this is because of a variety of reasons, one of which is the affordances that our digital tools give us in searching, linking, and retrieving notes. But Lumen did in fact use this ID system right here. These are Folgezettels and they are a structure you can use in your system. So those are three things to consider which I didn't talk about in my previous video. One, tags are doors, not corridors. Two, you can and should have an index of all your tags. Lastly, Folgezettels are another way through which you can link notes together. See you next time.